gonna have, I'm gonna sh shoot her kind of stepping out into the road. You know, we'll do the strobe. Okay, let's start again. Over here, Marco. Look at me first. Now start moving more towards Tyler. That's it. Beautiful. Almost. Ah, that's good. Hello everyone, Roberto Valenzuela here. Hope you enjoyed those little preview, little sneak peek of what I'm gonna be talking to you about today. All those photos were done with the Stella Pro Reflex S lights, which are brand new and they are very, very revolutionary, which is why I'm so excited to show you this video because I'm pretty pumped about it. For the first time in a long time, I see something that's actually quite helpful in the photo world and very exciting and very useful instead of just another gadget. Okay, so let's get into it. These are, this is the story. These are the Stella Pro Reflex S lights. These lights are a hybrid light between an LED light that's very powerful and a strobe. It's a digital burst is what they call it. It's not a true strobe like what you would like, like a Canon EL1 or something like that. It is a digital burst. But what I wanted to do is do a photo shoot to basically test these lights to their maximum. And I wanted to do a really high stress photo shoot. I wanted to do something really exciting and amazing, like, like the type of production shoots I normally do but I wanted to do it all with these lights, which is crazy because usually I bring in all these pro photo stuff and these big lights and setup and all these things. And this time I just wanted to do it with this. Let's get into it now. In May, every year, I go to Tucson for the Photo Creators Conference. In, it's in Tucson, Arizona. And this year we wanted to show up early and we wanted to do a photo shoot with a really dear, beautiful friend of mine named Arvon Inola. She is an amazing fashion designer and a model that's been modeling for a long time. And she's, I've known her since she was in college and it's been amazing. We have a great relationship, but we also wanted to do this photo shoot in Tucson and she's in Texas. So we had to fly her in. Then we wanted to bring in her hairstylist, which is an amazing hairstylist named Anna Cantu. And she's also from Houston, Texas. So we had to fly her in and we wanted to do this photo shoot in downtown Tucson in the middle of the night. Why in the middle of the night? Because we are crazy. Of course we are. That's exactly why. No. It's because we wanted to have the quietness of the streets. If we did this at 7 p.m. in downtown Tucson, everybody would be kicking us out. It would be like, you can't be here. You can't be shooting. What are you doing? They can, you know how it is. So no, thank you. We wanted to have clear streets and that's what we wanted to do. So the best way to do it is to suffer through it and do something crazy and do it in the middle of the night. We started the photo shoot at 1230. So we packed our bags. We got all our Stella Lights Pro ready to go, our reflex lights. Uh, we got the modifiers that they have ready to go. We, we brought our, our three meter cables. We brought all these modifiers. We brought our USB charging, a USB output charging device as well. And we brought our camera and we headed down. We left the hotel with, with the entire team. It was very exciting. We were laughing because it was so crazy. We get to downtown Tucson around 12.30 in the morning and there the, the magic of these lights began. First, you should know that we did this shoot in very well-known places in Tucson. There is a hotel called the Hotel Congress in downtown. Everyone knows about it. If you search Tucson, Arizona, like vintage hotels, it's like a staple, it's like an iconic hotel in Tucson called the Hotel Congress. And right in front of the Hotel Congress, there's a very iconic theater called the Rialto Theater. Everyone goes there. If you're a cool guy and you're hip and you're like trying to like mingle and stuff, you go to the Rialto Theater and you, you tell your friends, what are you doing tonight? <laughs> what do you think? I'm going to the Rialto. Or you're like, what? Like people are just like, oh my God, you're so cool. Can I please be your friend? Okay, it's that kind of theater. So because of the popularity of the Hotel Congress and how much history it has in Tucson, they don't allow people to shoot because it's all these big productions and people say like, no way, guests are gonna be bothered. So this is the first, this is the first advantage of the, of, the, of the reflex lights. When I went to the night manager to ask permission when we arrived, the model was getting on her makeup, 
we 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 were getting her dressed in the van it was like a party bus it was so fun but we did all this and we wanted to make sure that we were allowed to to get permission to shoot inside the hotel at least a couple of pictures you know but the chances are they're not going to let us well my idea was to show them that it, it wasn't going to be this big production so i show up with my canon r5 and the smallest lens i can get which is the rf 35 millimeter 1.8 look you can see how small this looks it doesn't look intimidating it's also 12 30 in the morning so there's no guests everything everything is basically alone and dark and quiet so that the guy was more cool about it and then i brought my little uh stella Pro reflex s light which looks just like this and if you actually take out the modifier for it it actually just looks like this so you tell me if you're the light ma night manager are you going to be freaking out about the production size if you have this no you're not so um the night manager said all right all right you know you know all right it's small setup you know middle of the night go for it so here's where the magic of the reflex lights begin the first thing is it led us into a place where they prohibit photo shoots but they gave us permission because they thought it was not going to big production so thank you to the reflex light for making it look like we were just going to be shooting with this but they didn't know how powerful these lights are and it illuminated the entire lobby like crazy but they by that time it was too late they, they had already let us through you know <laughs> so it was we're, we're good to go we get Arbany out of the car we get there we sit her down in this inside the hotel in this like 1800s early 1900s telephone switchboard looking machine thing and i start telling my team that uh you know like put your light here and stand there now because these lights are so small second advantage to the reflex lights these lights are so lightweight and so portable that anybody can hold these lights for a while yes you can put them on a light stand but you don't want to be bringing c stands that would look like a big production the advantage of this is that they don't weigh anything. I mean, these things weigh nothing. I mean, it's just like, what, who's gonna complain, you know? So you put this light on and you can actually illuminate pretty far because of how crazy strong these lights are and you are good to go. So I was able to put the model, put Arbany Nola there and, and sit her in this chair and start messing around with angles and, and camera angles and composition and all of this. And this brings me to the second huge advantage not often spoken about at least i have never seen anyone talk about it stella pro um, makes these reflex lights with these modifiers that are built for the device like you have this this little diffuser dome that you can just put in and diffuses the light you have this like 50 degree grid which basically it creates a 50 degree angle of output of the light you also have this one this is the this is the medium output, okay? This is the medium. So instead of the light just spreading everywhere, this, when you put this on, it narrows the beam of light and it gives you more control of the spread. And they even have this baby right here, which is my favorite, which is the spot. This is the spot. So when you put this guy on, it creates a spot effect. But that's amazing. And they do have all this ability to create this. They even have adapters like this one that you can get. And you can just put this on and you can put a, a, a pro photo softbox or you can put alien chrome you can put whatever um a, there's a list of what what softbox is but they do have a pro photo adapter which is right here so if you want to do like a pro photo softbox you can you you can put a beauty dish on this and make it work but that would make it look like a big production so advantage number two that i want to talk about is the reason why these photos came out so amazing is because we were using these lights not just to illuminate Arbony, but we were using these lights to communicate mood and a high fashion feel and we did that by doing like a jimmy rig version of modifying these lights with our existing equipment so i if you if you know me you know that i use my speed lights for everything i never do a photo shoot in just natural light even in the middle of the day i shoot with speed lights because it allows me to control light and it allows me to do something special instead of just natural light which is beautiful but it's just what everyone does and when you're at a, at a when you have a higher uh desire for creating something special that makes you stand out in like makes you look like a something truly professional you know you have to do something more refined and that means you have to use light to communicate not just to illuminate and that's the big difference so here's what i discovered 
using my existing my existing mag mod modifiers you know we use these mag mod modifiers to put them here and you can basically soften the light from a flash well what i discovered is that this opening of these mag mod modifiers actually fits you know quite easily through through this and now you have a soft LED light, <laughs> okay? So this softens the light a lot and you can just put it in and out. And so what we did is we used this guy, I think this is the, either the Mac Bounce or the Mac Sphere, and we put them in here. Like if you put this here like that and you stretch this around, something like this, you can actually turn this on and create a rather amazing quality of light. Look at this, look how soft this looks okay so i am actually creating a very soft quality of light but very directional and another thing i found is that if you use these mag mod modifiers for these lights you can use your hand and simply bend this and create different types of lighting on your subject so that allows you to create something pretty special the other thing we were able to use is, is this guy. We were able to use the MagMod Snoot, which can just be, you can, you can put it like this and just put it like that and then create a, a Snoot effect. Or if you want, you can make it longer and create a much more, almost like a very tiny little spotlight of light, which you can see on the wall, how small that is. And you can create cool shapes. Look at that, okay? So this is advantage number two. By using existing modifiers you already have, you can highly modify these lights because the opening of this light pretty much matches the opening of MagMod and you can just put them in there and create just the most ridiculous results. So we did that for the first shoot. We went, out, we went into the place, we shot Arbany with this amazing uh, lighting. We had Lana Polich, my friend from Croatia, holding one of the lights. We had Andre Plummer, another friend of mine, holding the other light to create a fill. And then we were able to mess with that until we created the right shadows and give it a high fashion, high end feel. Instead of doing what most people do with these kind of lights, which is simply turn it on, okay? Turn it on and you point it at a subject and maybe you, maybe you do something like this, I don't know, whatever. Okay, and then you just turn it on and then you illuminate and then you, take, you grab your camera and you start taking pictures. That's not crafting light. That is just illuminating the subject and taking pictures of that. What I'm encouraging you to do and what I was trying to do with these lights is, is it, is it possible to use these powerful LED lights, hybrid strobe lights to, to craft light like a way a pro photo strobe would? And the answer is, as you can see by the results, you can. The second thing I did is we went outside the hotel and we wanted to create something amazing there was this light that there was this uh neon lights that said hotel and in, on the front it said hotel congress but on the side it was a red neon light that just said hotel so i asked arbany if she can switch to her red outfit and anna and arbany changed the outfit and changed the hair or whatever we did and we created a cinematic look we wanted to create something that looked like a scene out of a movie and something that looked like a big production using these tiny little reflex lights. Is it possible? Let's see. So we went, we put Arbony there, we put the jacket, and I started posing her. And guys, I am looking for seriously good light. I'm not talking about basics, I'm talking about really crafting light. So I put on the modifiers that I needed to. I think we used we used the spot, the little, this little grid right here, and we used another modifier. I think we used one of the built modifiers to create the, the, the lighting that I was looking for. Not the lighting that I was getting, the lighting that I was looking for. Two very different things. The light that you get is just accepting light. Okay, there it is, there's light, I can see her, there's light. And then there is the light that you want. That's the light that's well-shaped, it's crafted, creates drama, dynamics, contouring, dimensions. That's what you want, very different. So we went ahead and took Arbony outside and we did this red hotel with his red jacket and we did this wide angle photo and the light was so powerful that my subject, my, my team was far away enough that they wouldn't even get in the picture and because we were able to narrow the beam of light, the light was able to shoot all the way to Arbony without the subjects being on my frame. That was amazing. 
The next one is we wanted to do a close-up and I wanted to see what, how the lights would behave. Would it, would it resemble a studio light? Would it, can you do it? Can you push these lights into something like that? And I was seriously blown away by if you modify these lights correctly, look at the results that I got on the close-up of Arbany. I mean, this looks like it was a big production studio strobe thing, but it was just this. I mean, look at that. It was done with this. So, so far guys, mind blown, honestly. One really popular technique that I like to use all the time with my speed lights is to put a speed light and put a collapsible diffuser in between the speed light and my subject. So that diffuser allows me to diffuse the light to whatever degree I want, but of course you need a lot of power to be able to get the light through that diffuser into your subject. So that was the next test. I wanted to see how does the light do, how do these lights do if I shoot them through a diffuser and can, they, can the light go through? And yeah, you do have to get the light closer to the diffuser. You're not gonna be able to put it far away, but you can get it closer. And it does diffuse the light and shoot it through the diffuser pretty well. So that was super impressive to me and I was very happy to see that because that makes my life a lot easier. I carry a diffuser everywhere I go. And if I just want some beautiful soft light real quick, and I don't want to have to pull out my, my, my flash or whatever, I can just pull out this guy real quick and then just put the diffuser and pam and, and make it work. So that was really cool. The last thing we did is we wanted to see if we have Arbony do something in action, like, like crossing the street or walking or moving fast or something. Can it can the lights be bright enough on the burst mode to freeze the motion and also, you know, expose to her properly? Um, like, can these lights do that? You know, because Arbon is going to be far away from me. She's not going to be too close. And I want to make sure that I capture her crossing the street and my team that's helping me with lighting is not going to be in the photo because they're trying to be so close to her. So can these lights have enough output for that? As you can see by the results, the, 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 the uh, my lighting team uh, Mandy, Andre, everybody, Robert, everybody who was helping me with lighting was pretty far away from her and they were able to f to follow her as she was crossing the street and walking and she just made several sec. attempts to, to, uh, to jump and I was just doing that because I wanted to capture the Rialto theater kind of in a good composition and also be able to capture her in movement and have the light freeze the motion so she's not blurred and I wanted to see if these lights can do all of that too. Um, that's it. They did it. I mean, the, this is the result. And I am really happy with it. How could you not? I mean, this is incredible. It looks like a really powerful light lit it, yet it was these guys that did it. So um, guys, I'm gonna put a link on the description. Uh, you, you're probably wondering, like, where do you get more info? You can go to Light and Motion, uh, just type on Google, Stella, whatever. You can look, at, look them up. Uh, but I'm gonna be giving you a 20% 20, okay, not 10 or 5 or 15, 20% discount on these lights. And you'll be able to do it by clicking on this link that I'll put up. And I'll put it on the description as well. And you can just click on the link. And as soon as you click on the link, you automatically will get 20% off the, the lights that you want to buy. So if you want to get them, if this is interesting to you, if you find these lights to be useful, and if you found this video useful, uh, and you, you're wondering what, what, what are all these hybrid lights about, I hope this video helped you kind of conceptualize, the re, the, conceptualize how you would work with them and knowing that you no longer have to blind someone to, to use an LED light. You can actually just point the light at them turned off and then use the strobe to light them at double the output. And I think that is a huge key for these lights. That's the main key. When you put a regular LED light to a person that are blinded and they just don't want that but these you can turn them off and just don't have the led on and then when you when you push the shutter on your camera it will fire a digital burst uh so a very powerful one 18,000 lumens so guys click on the link so you can support the channel uh, if you would like to support the channel even further subscribe to it put the thumbs up put the like and all, obviously i would love to read your comments about what you think about these lights or if you've gotten them or whatever i know a lot of people have opinions about them so please let me know what your opinions are these are my opinions and yes this video is sponsored by light and motion and stella but i obviously very honest about my experience with them so i wanted to give you guys that uh information we'll see you guys next time take care and we'll see you soon bye